Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain SiteWorks training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you some techniques to staking lines, such as top back a curb. I'm planning on making quite a few videos on staking different objects in different um, boxes, etc., etc. But right now, I wanted to talk to you about something that I notice a lot with customers as they start to learn how to get data from people that are creating it outside of what they're they're watching it created. They don't have someone in-house making it. They're just sending line work to someone out in the field and how they need to make sure that they're watching their sets of plans or understanding the data that's coming to them. What I mean by that is take this example right here where I've got my, my rover out here in a parking lot. I've imported a bunch of curb and gutter and edge of pavement lines. Um, if someone's been asked to stake the TBC here, you got to be really careful to understand where your highs and lows are instead of just putting a stake every five to 10 feet and missing the highs and low points. So this is what the data looks like as it would come to someone out in the field. There's a couple different ways to start staking that line. You can either touch and hold on it right here and it will actually give you the name or you can just go into your menu and go down to stake and then we'll ask you, what do you want to stake? So you can select that top back of curb right there, the TBC. As you come to the main screen, you may be on what's called fixed. So there's this icon right here with the lines with the arrows. If you come here and go to fixed, it's going to want you to specifically pick a spot along that line. If you leave this on random, then it's going to make it to where your trailing edge, that green line, is going to track where we are at. But as you notice here, there's just a line with no dots or anything. You have no idea where the highs and lows are that are called out on the uh, sets of plans. There's a gear on the left side right here as you're in stake mode. If you hit this one, it's the stake out line settings. If you turn this create tangent corner points on and say yes to that, you'll start seeing these all, all these little tiny white dots. Now I understand on a radius, there's quite a few of them, but right here, if I put my rover by it, there's just a random white dot and a random white dot there. This is one way to actually understand where maybe some of the callouts might have been when this was generated. So if I go to Trimble Business Center here, you'll see what that means here is to this 2319 and 2319 means that there's a high or a low or a very specific callout point for the curb and gutter right there. Um, on the radius, there's a fair amount right there. And then right here to the right where the 2479 etc. Those are very, very specific callout points that need to be staked out in the field. If they want intermediate stakes in between that, fine. But I'm just trying to teach you to make sure as you're out here, you understand what these are right here um, so that you don't stake a point right here and then stake a point right there and stake one right here and completely miss these highs and lows that are called out. So there's two ways to do this. One, you can either just have the stake out line and reference a set of plans to understand where those highs and lows are here, like I'm saying here with the, the, the set of plans. Um, and then you have to stake those very, very specific points. So there's one way to do it is you can either just hover over that point right there where that tangent is. And let's say that you're doing a three foot offset. Once you get to the point where you're right there on random, you can go to this inward outward until you hit about three feet. And that's where you would plant the stake for the cut fill. This is a little bit different because it's my emulator. If you can see that white dot, you can hit this arrow right here and go back to fixed and actually specifically call out that point right there. And even not knowing what the station was, you can pick that point and say, hey, I need to very specifically go there. And now you can see I'm kind of tagged wherever I go to that point. You also get a bullseye when you get within six feet of that point right there. So there's a couple different ways to do it this way. This is actually leaving the top back of curb in the one spot that it's at and then saying how far you want to be away from that line. Everybody's going to do it a little bit different. I kind of preferred to do it this way to where I wasn't offsetting the line and confusing myself and then accidentally adding to it. What you can do if you want is knowing that the arrows are going this way, you can come back into the stakeout line settings and you can put a horizontal offset and say, okay, three feet and knowing that my arrows were going up towards to the left there, I want to stay to the left of those lines. 
I can go ahead and put that on there, which if I come back out, you can see that this is the top back of curb right here. And now I've got a three foot offset to where at this point, I don't have to worry about trying to stay three feet away from that line. I can literally just go until I'm right over that line on random. And I know that that's exactly three feet behind it. That dot represents where I needed to be. And that's my cut fill. So that's another way to do it is to offset. Just be aware that there's a chance that if you're going back and forth between the two different ideas, there's a chance now you can go three feet too far and make it six feet behind the curb. You can go back here and simply just put this back as zero anytime you need. One thing that I would say in construction survey for those of you that are just being handed um, a file that you're a little unsure on where exactly the stake is to call and ask for stakeout points. So in Trimble Business Center or whatever program someone's using, for each one of these call out points, they can create points like I have right here. So each one of those very specific call out points, you can see where this curb and gutter is kind of rising and coming down here. There's created points. And same thing over here where I was just showing you we were staking a minute ago. There's actual call out points, points to stake. Instead of accidentally staking the line in the wrong spot, or um, missing a high or low. So those can be exported out. We can come in here and go ahead and just export these as a custom point northing, easting, and elevation. And I'll just grab it by layer. So I'll go ahead and send this out to a thumb drive. And then I can go ahead and put it in um, here, and I can put this as my my uh, TBC call out points. I'll go ahead and save that. So now what you can do out in the field is I'm going to go ahead and hit menu and uh, measure just to cancel out. What I can do is throw a thumb drive into my data collector. I can go down to the menu or to the menu button, go to data management down here. And the very first one that comes up in data management is point manager. So I can import points at any point. I can import a point file. Now I can either make them a control point or a stakeout point. The difference here on your screen is a control point is going to be a triangle. And it's also going to be something that's going to be harder to delete. So it's a bigger point. They're all northing easting elevations, but I would just consider, I would suggest that you just do stakeout points. Then what you would do is you're looking for a CSV file. Go ahead and navigate, click in this box right here and navigate to your, your points where you've got them on a thumb drive. So I'm gonna to change to my thumb drive here. I'm gonna to go to the site and I'm gonna, and it looks, is automatically looking for a CSV file. So I'm gonna accept and bring that file in, my TBC callout points. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in 27 different points that I've got here, push okay. Now, if I zoom down in the area here, you'll see that I've got actual defined callout points. I know exactly where that one is. I know where this one is. And this is just the other way and also these two points right here. So I think I would prefer this um, because I've still got the stakeout line option if I needed to add something. But I also have very defined points that I could go ahead and touch on that point. TBC1, and I can stake that point. So there's another option to make sure that you get those in the exact spot that you need to. If your job site's pretty square, you can use this option to do that three feet away from there if you needed to. Everybody's going to do it a little bit different, but I'm just trying to let you see um, the difference here on, on these. If you want to see the names of those points, those call-out points, you can go to the gear right here, and under measure, you can turn on point name. If someone had given you actual like numbers of those, I just called them TBC1 through 27, but someone may actually call those out as different names. So hopefully this helps with understanding the difference between staking a line that has the highs and the lows and um, using and importing just single points. So thank you for watching this video from Site Taken or Mountain on staking top back of curb points.